Act 1 opens in Venice, where we meet shipping merchant Antonio. He has just invested some money in a bunch of ships and hopes to make a profit soon. He also has many friends who love him for his generosity. Antonio, despite all this love, is depressed and cannot say why. Meanwhile, Antonio's friend Bassanio is facing some of his own problems. He needs some money to go woo a beautiful woman named Portia. Antonio promises to help Bassanio get the money. In Belmont, we meet Portia, who is rich but cannot marry whom she wants. Her father's will has decreed that wealthy men can come and undergo a puzzle to win her in marriage. The one man that Portia likes is Bassanio, but he's too poor to woo her. Little does Portia know that back in Venice, the Jewish moneylender Shylock is lending Antonio 3,000 gold ducats, or coins. Antonio is borrowing the money on behalf of Bassanio, so that Bassanio will have enough money to woo Portia. By the way, Antonio, a Christian, hates Shylock for being Jewish, and Shylock hates Antonio too. Antonio is happy to have a business-like relationship with Shylock, but Shylock wants revenge for all the abuse and discrimination that he has suffered at Antonio's hands. So Shylock lends out the money on one condition. If Antonio cannot pay back the money, Shylock will claim a pound of Antonio's flesh. Antonio, confident in his trading business, is not worried because he is expecting the ships to return with a sizable profit. Act 2 returns us to Belmont, where we learn more about the puzzle designed by Portia's father. Anyone who wants to marry Portia must choose between three caskets, one of gold, one of silver, and one of lead. If they have chosen correctly, they will find Portia's portrait inside, and Portia will have to marry them. The Prince of Morocco decides to have a go and chooses the gold casket only to find inside a skull with the inscription that tells him, All that glisters is not gold. Portia, who didn't like him at all, is happy to see him fail and leave. Back in Venice, Shylock's servant Launcelot is planning to quit and go work for Bassanio. Launcelot, who is a comic character, hates working for Shylock, claiming that Shylock is starving him. Shylock's daughter Jessica is also planning to leave her father to elope with Lorenzo, who is Christian. Marrying a Christian is a rejection of both her father and her faith. To make matters worse, when she elopes, she runs away with all her father's money and jewels. Meanwhile, back in Belmont, the Prince of Aragon has come to woo Portia. Much to Portia's relief, he chooses the silver casket. Inside the casket is a picture of an idiot, meaning that Aragon was foolish for choosing the silver casket. In Act 3, Venice is abuzz with rumours that some of Antonio's ships have been lost at sea. If Antonio can't pay back the loan, Shylock says that he will definitely demand a pound of his flesh. Shylock talks about all the injustice he has faced because he is a Jew. He is just as human as a Christian. If Christians hurt him, why wouldn't he want to take revenge? Meanwhile, Bassanio arrives at Portia's house to try his luck with the caskets. He rejects the flashier caskets, choosing the lead one. Nice work, Bassanio. He has chosen correctly and wins Portia. Portia gives him a ring and he promises never to part with it. Then Bassanio's friend Graciano also announces the exciting news that he is engaged to Portia's maidservant, Nerissa. Graciano gets a ring too, and just like Bassanio, he promises never to part with it. But there's no time for celebration. News comes through that Antonio has lost all his ships. Now Shylock is demanding a pound of flesh from Antonio. Antonio is in big trouble. Portia offers to help pay back the loan, but Shylock intends on claiming the promised pound of flesh. Bassanio plans to return to Venice immediately. 
Secretly, Portia decides that she and her maid, Nerissa, will go to Venice too, disguised as men. In the fourth act, Portia, disguised as a male lawyer, appears at the Venetian court where Shylock is demanding justice. Shylock even pulls out a knife and starts sharpening it in front of everyone, ready to cut out a pound of flesh from Antonio. At first, Portia seems to argue in Shylock's favour. After all, it's perfectly legal for him to claim what he has owed. Then, at the last moment, Portia suddenly reminds everyone of two extra laws that they've all forgotten about. First, it's illegal for an outsider to shed a drop of Venetian blood. Secondly, it's illegal for an outsider to plan to kill a Venetian. Since the Jewish Shylock is considered an outsider, he is found guilty of breaking the law. He must forfeit all his wealth and convert to Christianity. This is a bitter blow for the ruined Shylock. Bassanio and Graciano are so grateful to Portia and Nerissa for saving Antonio's life that they are tricked into giving their rings away to the disguised lawyers. Of course, the men are completely unaware that they are actually giving the rings up to their wives. Remember, they had promised not to give the rings away. Act 5 opens back in Belmont. Portia and Nerissa confront Bassanio and Graciano, demanding to know where their rings are. It's a pretty funny scene because we know exactly where the rings are. Portia and Nerissa have them. Finally, the play ends on a happy note. Lorenzo and Jessica are set to inherit from Shylock. Antonio finds out three of his ships have returned safely and Bassanio and Graciano get their rings back, promising to be ever faithful. So, nearly everyone lives happily ever after. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on The Merchant of Venice, check out our analysis of all the themes within the play.